Hello, everyone. A few people are still joining, so I'm just going to give an extra minute before kicking, kicking off things. Uh, so hold one moment, please. Okay, I'll uh, get started. So uh, welcome and thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Jeff Vanderbee. I'm Cision's Senior Manager of Product Marketing for Europe and Canada. I'm joined on today's session by Luke Williams, who's the Product Marketing Executive for the UK. Uh, so today we're gonna give you a, a walkthrough of our monitoring and targeting software, Cision Communications Cloud. Uh, but before I hand it over to Luke for a live demonstration of Comms Cloud's capabilities and benefits, I wanna talk a little bit about the Cision vision to provide a little context for what what you're about to see. Uh, of course, we'll leave ample time at the end for any questions you might have. So if you do have questions, please submit them on the right using the uh, questions module. So I'll start with some of the problems that uh, Cision saw our clients trying to address. So measuring the impact of earned media campaigns is essential for many of our communicators today. We hear it all the time from both prospects as well as our customers. But unfortunately, many comms teams aren't set up in a way to track this type of data, or if they are, they might not understand exactly how to align the data with their overarching business objectives. Um, Cision, in partnership with PR Week, we asked more than 400 comms professionals globally, and nearly three quarters of them said that they didn't have the ability to tie their programs back to key business outcomes. So communicators rely on important metrics to show how they drive brand awareness and exposure for their company. Some of the top metrics they use today to measure the value of their earned media may include things like total reach or impressions or content performance. Now the real challenge that communicators face, how do you tie those metrics back to specific business outcomes? The types of revenue metrics needed obviously vary by industry, but include things like shopping cart conversion for B2C, or influencing lead gen programs for B2B. When it comes to content and, and campaigns, communicators find themselves stuck in the reach game. So the reach game is predicated on the idea that the value of their stories and content is purely based on how many eyeballs consume a piece of content. But when they're stuck playing the reach game, they often run into diminishing returns. Traditional campaigns tend to be more episodic in nature. So with an episodic campaign, such as a product launch or an executive announcement, a single communication is made and the temptation is often to circulate it to the largest and broadest audience possible to get that reach. But this model yields unsustainable engagement because there's nothing to keep those audiences interacting long term if it's not contextualized to their needs. Communicators need to move to a more modern campaign structure that incorporates a mix of reach with more individualized targeting. For modern camp comms campaigns, they need continuous content. They need to be able to segment to more targeted audiences while still ensuring that they have a strong reach for those audiences. If communicators are, are instead able to push more focused content to a more targeted audience, they can see more sustained engagement from earned media campaigns. Today's communicators must also change the way they think about influencer identification. The anecdotal model for influencer identification is a little outdated. I'll paint a picture of that for you here now. So for outreach, if communicators wanna get traction with traditional media or news influencers, they do it based on the media list they have on file or tap into the existing relationships they have. For the influencer, their decision to create coverage is predicated on whether the pitch is newsworthy or if they trust that relationship enough with the communicator. With regards to the audience, the people reached are largely unknown. All the communicator has to go on is the vague circulation, listener, or viewership data the media outlet publishes. Once they've gone through these steps, hoping for coverage, 
they then either abandon that influence or outreach or try again. So it's time for comms to transform to a new model of influencer identification, one that is data-driven. In this model, for outreach, the communicator must start with a look at the end customer or end audience data. That data can then be used to generate the right set of influencers to go and reach. For the influencer, because data was used to inform the outreach to them, they are more likely to respond and generate earned media because they can see the relevance to their target audience. Now, with regards to the audience, communicators have the ability to track down more details on the audience makeup. This, of course, arms them with the data they need to inform how they do the influencer outreach in the future. So all of these problems that I just discussed, this is what we are trying to solve for communicators with Decision Comms Cloud. Our mission is to empower communicators to identify the right influencers, craft and distribute meaningful campaigns, and attribute business value for those efforts. These sort of three themes, I'm gonna come back to again and again during my segment of this presentation and talk about how the platform really aligns with that vision. So how did we get here with the comms cloud? So the foundation for Cision's comm cloud started with the merger of Cision and Vocus. This provided the core PR software for media database, media monitoring, and analytics. Around that same time, we realized that a comms cloud needed to have social woven into its workflow. So we brought together Visible for social listening and Viral Heat for social publishing. And then in 2015, we brought Gorkana for its premium global database, monitoring, analytics, and its expert teams. Gorkana makes up a large part of our foundation in the UK and plays a big part in powering the Cision Communications Cloud. Announced in 2015 and closing in 2016, we brought PR Newswire on board because we realized that in order to be a central platform for communicators, we needed press release distribution, and PR Newswire is the leading Newswire provider. Since then, we've continued to make key strategic acquisitions, like Bulletin, Largus, and Prime, which we just announced last year and closed this year. All of these acquisitions are with the aim of helping communicators better understand the performance of their campaigns and their impact on key business outcomes. So these investments we've made have given us the power to provide comms professionals with the tools they need to carry out activities across the entire workflow. We like to think of communications and PR as part of an overall life cycle, and we envision comms cloud optimizing the effectiveness of each segment. So looking at the segments here, uh, I'll start with identify influencers. How we feel the comms cloud can help here is in research. So our view of the workflow showed little research was done on what media was saying about a topic or conversation before a press release was sent into it. So comms cloud allows you to do this, helping you to refine your content to deliver more responses. Related to that, discover, discover right influencers. The Cision comms cloud merges the data of several market leading databases, which deliver a breadth of contacts, as well as insight on those contacts. In the craft, camp, craft campaign segment, um, the develop relevant content, stages one and two, these allow you to target the right media with the most relevant content, as well as consider tailored content to different media lists. In addition, comms cloud will help you warm up these contacts to further maximize responses. Distribute to influencers, there are a couple of different elements to this one. One, the platform allows you to distribute by email and publish across social media platforms. But comms cloud also makes it quick and easy to use link tracking URLs from other platforms, such as Google Analytics, Eloqua, and Marketo, so you can track interactions with your email content in the comms cloud and within the tracking URLs native platform. And of course, in terms of distribution, our clients also have access to premium PR Newswire distribution options. On the attribute value side, one, monitoring audience impact, comms cloud monitors and analyzes the earned media that you're interested in across traditional media as well as online and the main social media platforms. Going further, we help analyze the results, the results of that on the business. So integration with Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics, this means we can track the direct effects of earned media on your website metrics. With such metrics used to measure both communications and wider company objectives, we can help analyze your team's contribution to these goals and their ROI against them. Ultimately, being able to do all of these things on your own internally requires time and investment. Analyzing the content created by your audience or for your audience by your competitors presents a gap. So tied into all of these product offerings that Cision holds are teams of experts who are available to help you get the most from your usage of our products. 
and most importantly, give your organizations the insights to help you make the core decisions that guide your content strategy. From foundation of your campaign to analyzing business results, Cision is here to help comms professionals navigate the evolving influencer landscape at every turn. So that's the thought process behind Comms Cloud. <clears throat> but I want to dive a little deeper into some of our unique capabilities and talk about how they align with that mission statement. So with Cision, communicators can take a customer-driven approach to their influencer strategy. Like we mentioned earlier, they start with the data about their customers, including their behaviors, attributes, and preferences. Using that data, the Cision Comms Cloud will generate the right influencers to reach through earned media campaigns. Communicators can base these queries on topic or audience interests, to name a couple of unique options, and then see details about the audience makeup of those influencers. As communicators use Cision Comms Cloud, the system will get smarter and give them specific recommendations for influencer outreach. Cision empowers communicators to contextualize their campaigns without giving up reach. First, communicators can start with specific areas they want to target their content, whether that be through specific industry verticals <clears throat> or geographies, as example. Once they're ready to distribute their content, communicators can choose from amongst the most comprehensive networks in the world. Essentially, they get targeted audiences without sacrificing reach. The reason this is important is they can start to contextualize their coverage, which improves their ability to influence end customer or end audience behavior. And obviously, no matter how great a campaign may seem, it doesn't matter unless communicators can attribute its business value. Cision's combination of analytics in the comms cloud and customized reporting from our Cision Insights team empowers communicators to tie their metrics to customer behavior and ultimately to real business outcomes. Cision's data-driven offerings will allow communicators to tap into the broader earned media ecosystem when measuring the value of their campaigns. In doing so, it'll help to demonstrate ROI for their earned media campaigns and the best influences to target for future campaigns. So in our last software release, we really put a heavy emphasis on our social capabilities. So I did want to devote some time specific to that subject and the problems we're trying to address in that area. Social has been on our radar for a number of reasons. One of the main ones being that we've heard from both prospects and customers that they struggle to fully integrate social activities into their earned media campaigns. So that's not really a surprise because first off, over the past decade, there has been an explosion of people interacting on social channels for both personal and business purposes. Now, broader marketing groups have successfully tapped into the world of social in a number of ways, from customer support to general audience engagement. Um, unfortunately, in many cases, comm teams have fallen behind their peers with insufficient insight into how to best identify those journalists and influencers that will reach their target audience and impact business results. While other marketing teams have the support of social media management tools, comms teams require a specific solution that will integrate with the rest of their comms initiatives. Comm teams have a data problem when it comes to social. The reason they can't identify social influencers is because they've spent the last decade relying mostly on some soft metrics, such as the aggregate number of likes, comments, or shares. Without the meaning behind those numbers, how can comms professionals possibly attribute value to their social campaigns. As a result of this lack of data, comms professionals are left, left guessing. They assume their most liked or most shared uh, content or posts are the ones that matter, and then they create similar content, hoping they'll generate big numbers again. The problem with this approach is that they're not necessarily delivering content that resonates with their target audiences. A trending or viral post might be proof that a topic sparked interest, but there's no guarantee that it did so from the audiences that matter. Just as I went through our key areas of focus of slides back on identifying influencers, crafting campaigns, and attributing value, I wanted to talk about how social fits into those. First, I'll start with um, identify influencers again on the left. We first start by monitoring conversations across all earned media channels, including key so social media networks, to identify which influencers are discussing relevant brands, industries, or topics. Now we can gauge the impact of these influencers on their target audience. With craft campaigns, by evaluating the level of engagement with specific social posts, as well as the individuals who have participated in the social interaction, 
they can determine which content is most impactful to the audiences that matter to their brand. And again, with attribute value, we can attribute value to social media efforts and share the success with key internal and external stakeholders, much the same way in the same platform as we can with earned media campaigns. So to go through them one by one, identify influencers. So in the new model, in order to do this, you might first start by looking at that broad, the broad data points I mentioned earlier, such as the aggregate number of mentions, likes, comments, followers, et cetera, across various social channels to understand engagement trends. Once you understand where your social coverage is coming from, then you can determine who the influencers are that are posting most frequently about your brand, your competition, your products, et cetera, and uncover down to the specific post what those influencers are actually saying. With this level of granularity, you'll be able to create more effective messaging and campaigns to resonate with the right influencers that will impact your target audiences. On the craft campaign side, with decision monitoring, you'll have the ability to listen for those conversations that matter most via popular social channels like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, alongside coverage from all other earned media coverage. Social is not a standalone function for comms, but it's part of a larger campaign strategy. Having an all-in-one platform allows teams like yours to view campaigns across influencers, traditional media, and social media to see how messaging and campaigns are resonating with target audiences. By setting up keyword search strings, you may monitor specifically for what people are saying about your brand or your competition or any other topics you consider most relevant. Once content starts coming in, Comms Cloud enables you to easily filter social conversations to pinpoint which social media channels and influencers are most relevant to your brand. You can also identify the news coverage generating the best results on social channels. Now, social media, social media marketing vendors, while important for the broader marketing group, and even other departments, they do not necessarily meet the unique needs of social comms. Many social vendors identify as a social customer experience management platform, and that's exactly what they are. They're focused on helping brands reach, engage, and respond to customers across a plethora of different social channels. Their platform is a great solution for marketers to manage their customer lifecycle on social. However, they do not typically integrate with earned media campaigns and initiatives the way a comms team needs it to. On the attribute value side, Cision Analytics enables you to visualize social data in a way that matters to your brand and also specifically to your internal and external audiences. Uh, we let you create very easy to read charts and engaging, easy to share dashboards. With the ability to filter this data by any number of custom categories, comms teams are finally able to find the meaning behind the numbers, go beyond overall mentions, and leverage engagement and follower data to identify which elements of a campaign actually drove the most interest. So to sum up, why do world-class companies choose Cision? At this point, I'm gonna pass this over to Luke who will actually show you the answer to the question within the platform itself. Uh, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, please submit them on the right-hand side by the questions module and we will uh, take them at the end of the webinar. At this point, Luke, I'll let you take over and we'll do a demonstration of the platform itself. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so uh, my name is Luke Williams and I'm the product marketer here in the UK. And today I'm gonna take you through a very high level overview of the Cision Comms Cloud. And we can take a look at some of those um, key workflows which uh, Jeff discussed previously. So as we get logged into the platform here, what I'm gonna do is, is just direct your attention to the key uh, four tabs at the top here. So I'll just go through and explain what each of these involves. So essentially we have the influencers first, so this here is um, essentially our media database. So this is where we can go and conduct our searches and identify the influences which we want to connect to. We also then have uh, the lists. So once we've found these influences, we can bundle these into our, our list contact. The campaigns is essentially all of our outreach. So if we want to send an email distribution or some social posting, this is where all of that information is then collected. We then have the My Campaigns, which is essentially the hub of everything within the platform where we can connect all of our activities to a specific campaign. In the News section, we have what is our media monitoring. So any keyword searches that you have set up with us here at Cision, all that content that we bring through for you will be delivered to this part of the platform. We also have our analytics. So this is where we can start to chart and graph all of that information to really make sense of the coverage we've earned. 
And then we have our insights. So this is where if we can connect our Facebook and Twitter accounts for our companies to get some more of insights into that, that material. And also our Outlook conversions. So with connecting Google and Adobe Analytics, we can start to track our conversions. So to start off, I'm gonna take us over to the influencers part of the platform and we can conduct a search. So here we are at the search, search menu. We have a drop down where we can select a lot of different criteria in order to find the people we're looking for. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these because many of them are what you'll be used to in, in using any uh, kind of media database. But of course we can do the typical uh, search by subject, um, but we can also then combine these with other elements. So for example, if we wanted to find a technology journalist who is based out of Manchester, then we can, we can combine those to find that very specific journalist. Today, what I'm gonna do is, is use our talking about search. So this is um, a new feature we have, which is uh, a lot of our customers really enjoy using. And it essentially allows us to identify influencers based on topics they're discussing on Twitter or in content which they um, have published. So for this example, I'm gonna take us through and look at a slightly more niche topic of Formula One. So as we get through here to our results, in the top left hand side here, you can see uh, the breakdown between social media and news for our Twitter or news, but we're gonna stick with uh, the social for this example. So when you conduct an influencer search, this is the typical kind of landing page you'll see. So we have uh, the list here of all the results which match our search, we've got 507. And then as we click through to each one on the right hand side here, we have our preview window. And as we scroll down, we can also start to see some examples of uh, their profile information. The really great bit about this page though is the filters on the left hand side because what we really want to do is start to narrow these results down to find the people we really want to target. There are lots of different things we can do through here. I'm going to go through and just select uh, United Kingdom so I can just see those influences from the UK. But of course we can then combine this with more options if we want to look at specific job roles or any of these other criteria. So one of the really great things about this talking about search is that it allows us to go dig deeper than the normal uh, subjects which we have assigned to contacts. So we can really start to find out what specific niche topics people like writing about. So if we go over here and we have a look at Ken, Ken is the founder and editor of Drive Blog. So we would expect that he would probably have an interest in Formula One. And as we scroll down here, we can start to see some of the recent tweets he has related to that search we conducted. So we know that he's regularly talking about F1. And if we had some content that we wanted to deliver, we know that he could reach the audience we would like. But the other great thing about this is if we go through to some other examples, maybe with Chris. So Chris typically writes about restaurants and dining. So we would never have found him in a normal search if we wanted to find automotive or, or Formula One specific bloggers. But if we go down here and have a look at some of his tweets, we can see that he's been talking about some of the political issues around Formula One. So he clearly has an interest in the topic. And if that was a particular thing we wanted to write about, we know that Chris would actually be interested in that and perhaps also his audience on social media would too. Another good thing we can do here from this results page is head over to um, the grid view. So this just allows us to see some of that data um, in a more analytical view. And we can also start to scroll through here and see all of that information here um, if this is a view that you would prefer to use. As we head back here, maybe we want to select a few of these um, influencers. So we go and select these. And then we have uh, this action bar here. So we can start to add these people to our list. So if we've already got some lists built here in the platform, we can add them to an existing list. Or we can go straight through here and we could enter some text and we could build a brand new list based upon this search. We can download. So if we want to export these as a CSV file to input into Excel, we can do that. We also have our briefing books, which I won't go through uh, fully now, but this is just a nice presentable way for us to share this information with our colleagues. We can also connect straight away, so we can just go through and start sending some emails, and we can also assign some activities, which we will look at later on. So from here, I'm just gonna head back to the search, and we're just gonna go and take a look at an influencer profile. So it may be that we need to find uh, an influencer with all of the different criteria we have, or we may know exactly who we're looking for. And in this case, I know I want to speak to Harry Waller. So we're going to select Harry here from the drop down and we're going to head through to his profile. So this is a, a good example of a typical profile you can expect to see in the system comms class. So as you can see here, we've got lots of different boxes which cover lots of really, really useful information about those influencers. So I'm just going to go through each one very briefly now. So the first one in front of us here is the pitching profile. So this is all the really good information that our media research team here in the UK collect. And this will just give us that extra level of insight to understand who Harry is, uh, what are the topics he likes writing about. And we can also start to see a little bit about his career history and also what he's actually working on right now. So this just gives us that extra level of information in order to make our pitches uh, really successful. 
The other section here on the right is our notes section. So this is actually personal to each user's account. This isn't information once you've input this here that's public to everyone that uses the comms cloud. So this just allows us to um, add some personal touches. So here we've in input that he um, doesn't work on Mondays and he likes to be contacted by email first. So this just really helps us with collaboration amongst our teams to pass on that information, which is really gonna help us connect with Harry um, in the best way possible. We then also have our insights tab. So this gives us a little bit more information about Harry's audience uh, across Twitter. So we can start to see a breakdown here of the demographics, also the, the audience brands and the beats. So we can see here that um, Harry's audience would be interested in Museum of London, Children's Society. So this just gives us that extra level of information to understand what his audience are interested in. And then when it comes to pitching, we know that we're going to be able to deliver the right message to the right people. The history section here gives a little bit of background information about our interactions with Harry. So if we head over to my coverage, this relates to the news my coverage section, which I'll um, go into more detail later. But here we can see some interactions that Harry's had with our brand. These are some mentions that he where he's mentioned the, the company brand uh, across Twitter. So from this, we can start to see um, is are Harry's interactions with us positive or are they negative? And any content that we then reach out to him to, do we need to start to, to correct that or maybe jump on board some positive uh, coverage that he's uh, gained for us? We then also have the activities. So this is where we can log any kind of interaction we've had with Harry. So here we've listed that we had an appointment with him, we met him for a coffee. We can also uh, track all of the uh, dist email distributions we sent to Harry. So if we, again, working within our teams and we'd sent an email yesterday, our team members can then see uh, I don't want to send him another email today because we don't want to start spamming him. So this is also just a really good uh, tool for collaboration. On the right hand side here, we have streams. So we see here that Harry has his uh, Twitter account uh, connected. So from here, as we would scroll through, we would be able to see uh, some of his followers. And we can also see um, a nice stream there of uh, his uh, tweets. You might also like section at the bottom is a really intuitive part of the platform. So this essentially allows us to uh, suggest influencers based on your search for Harry. So we've got here Tom Newton Dunn, who's a political editor at The Sun. So these are very similar influencers to Harry. And from here, we can start to go through, uh, click through their profiles and start building lists very, very easily. So with that in mind, what we'll do is we'll head straight through to the uh, My Lists part of the platform. And from here, we can see a full breakdown of our list. As you can see, um, the results page is very similar as to when we conducted um, our influencer search. On the left-hand side here, we have all of our different uh, lists we've built. I'm gonna head over to one I built previously for our Formula One search. So again, if we look at the left-hand side here, uh, we have our filtering options. So if we had a rather large list, we might want to um, break this down even further. But for this, we're just gonna stick with the ones we have here. So one of the really good things about our, our uh, lists are the recommended editions. So if I click through here, the platform is going to suggest influencers based upon our search, which match the same criteria. So we can start then adding these to our lists and so we can make sure we're constantly evolving and ensuring that we're contacting new people that can deliver our message. One of the other great features here is our analysis view. So as we head over here, we can start to see a little bit of breakdown um, about the location of our influencers. So as you saw previously, uh, I conducted a search just for uh, Formula One influencers in the UK. So as you can imagine, they're all here based out of the United Kingdom. And we have a breakdown here also of subject. On the right here, we see um, a nice Twitter stream. So these are all the, the recent tweets of all of the influencers on that list. And from here, we can really start to observe the conversations they're having. Are they talking about very similar issues that we can then start to, to create some content for? We can also go directly through here and we can reply straight to them. We can also like uh, and also retweet. So it gives us that extra level of interaction with them before we then go on to start contacting them. So with that in mind, I'm gonna head over to the campaigns part of the platform and head into my activities. So this really is all of our outreach that we want to conduct, any kind of message we want to deliver. We've gone through, we've found uh, the influencers we want to contact, we've built our lists, now we want to go out there and reach them. So as a quick overview of this page that you can see here, we have the different options at the top here where we can start to interact. On the left-hand side, we have our filtering options, and then in the middle here, we have all of the different um, either sent, drafts, or any kind of scheduled posts for the future. So I mentioned previously about email distribution, so we'll start off with that and I'll quickly show you uh, the wizard that we use in order to create these. It's very, very easy to do. So we go through here after having named our, our distribution. Uh, we can go through here and select a list. So for this example, I'll select our Formula One list. 
And then from here, we have some default templates. So it just makes it very, very quick and easy for us to set up our distributions. But one of the really great things we can do is start to build out some custom templates. So this allows us to include things like company logos and just overall have control over the design, which allows us to make much more personal uh, email distributions, which is then hopefully more likely to be successful when we reach out to those influencers. As we go through here, we can then start to input our text, which we can also um, insert Word documents, we can upload images, and we can also go through and schedule these or we can send them immediately. So that's just a very quick view of how we can do uh, email distribution in the platform. But one of the really great things about doing this in the platform is the analytics we can see from our results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and select uh, a release that I had previously done. And from here, what we're gonna be able to do is see a little bit of information about how the influencers we've contacted have actually interacted with our distribution. So one of the great things here, we can see uh, the open rates. We've had 80% open rate on this, the click-through rate, which is at 60%. And this relates to any links that we've input into the content that we sent in the email distribution, how many of those uh, were clicked through. And then we have a bounce rate, which thankfully for this is at 0%. So if we look at the right hand side, this is where the real uh, good information lies. So we have these five um, influences here and up on the right here, we can start to see um, whether they opened uh, the email and also whether they click through the links. So the great thing about this information is we can then start to build out new lists based on influences that have either been really engaged with us or maybe we need to take a different approach with. So Simon obviously uh, opened and clicked the link um, as did Kevin. So we might want to build a list. We know that, that he was interested in that content and he wanted to find out more information. Whereas someone like Ross here, uh, he didn't open it and obviously as a result didn't click through any links. So um, maybe we don't want to contact him anymore with that kind of information or maybe we need to change our approach. So this is just really useful information for uh, future campaign planning. So let's go back again into the My Activities part of the platform. So another great thing we can do here is social posting. So if we click through here, we can start to uh, uh, schedule or send out instantly posts to uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. We can also um, bulk post. So if you have a, a CSV file with uh, lots of posts scheduled, we can upload that so that we can uh, schedule these to go out at a later date. And when we've done that, another uh, great view we have here um, in this section is the calendar view. So this allows us to see a full breakdown of, of all of the different activities we've had scheduled or that have previously gone out. So it's just a really easy way for us to see. So if we'd have uploaded the, um, those uh, social posts to book, um, we would be able to see them all scheduled here. Finally, from here, uh, the uh, custom activities. So as I mentioned previously, when we looked at the influencer profiles, we can start to uh, assign certain activities, whether that be a meeting, a call. And this just gives us, as I said before, an extra level um, of control over um, everyone that uses the platform. We can see what interactions we're having and uh, it just makes um, our interactions with that person much more personal. So from here, what I'm gonna do is head into the My Campaign section. So this is really where everything ties together. So it's really where we can start to, all those influencers we've, we've uh, contacted, we can start to assign to a specific campaign. Any coverage we've had earned, we can also assign, and any of those activities. And we can bring all of this together, bucket it in one place, and start to get an overview of our overall campaign success. So you can see here for this campaign, we've engaged with 274 influencers, created 41 activities, and earned 9,000 pieces of coverage. And as we scroll down here, we can start to see more information. So we can see the media types, uh, we can also see the types of activities. So how are we actually engaging with these influencers? Which pieces were most successful? And then on the right here, we can see all of our news. So these are the top um, articles we've achieved. And we can see an overall view of the sentiment. So um, which, how many pieces were positive, negative, and neutral. From here, I'm just gonna very quickly head into the news section. So we'll go into a news search. So this part of the platform uh, is essentially our media monitoring. So any kind of keywords that you've had set up with Cision for us to bring through content will, will be delivered into this part of the platform. And from here, as before, when we conducted an influencer search, you see a very similar dropdown where we can search by lots of different criteria. Um, for today, what I'm gonna do is just select a date range and we'll go and have a look at some of the content that we received from last week. So we'll go from Monday through to Friday and search. And again, from this page, what you'll notice is we have a very consistent format throughout the platform. The results page um, will be very, very similar. You'll be able to see all of the different um, coverage pieces here on the, in the middle. Here we go. And as we click through, 
you can see some previews of that content here on the right hand side. Now, as you can see, when we conducted this search for coverage of last week, we received uh, 5,000 results. So that's a lot of uh, media for us to go through. So the key thing here is going to be these filters on the left hand side for us to break it down and really uh, get to the uh, coverage, which is most important to us right now. So I'm just going to go through here straight up and go uh, and select for online coverage. And that breaks it down a little bit more. So we have 1,448 pieces. But there are some other really great filtering options we can do here. So we can search by outlet if we want to. So if, for example, um, we really want to see how we're being represented in the Telegraph, we can search for that and see all of the different pieces of coverage we've had for that particular publication. So that's a really nice feature that a lot of um, clients like to use. We can also look at tone. So we can see uh, how many pieces of neutral coverage have we had, positive, negative. And from here, we, if we click through, we can see, OK, what were these 109 pieces of negative content? Um, are there any consistent themes across that? And are there anything we need to jump on the back of? Another great one is company. So if, we, if you're setting up to not only monitor for your own um, brands, but also for um, your competitors, you can start to see um, what, how much coverage you're receiving against those. We can also combine these searches. So if we looked at um, the filters for tone, we could start to see how much uh, positive coverage are we receiving against our competitors. This is just a really great way for us to dice this data down even more and really understand that which we need to see. So from here, what I'm going to do is um, head over to the grid view. And from here, we can then start to rank the content based on the criteria that's most important to us. So as you can see here, um, we have lots of different criteria. I'm going to go for the uh, UVPM figure here, and we're going to rank this uh, in that order. I will say that within the platform, the UVPM figure is actually digital reach, which is a decision zone proprietary metric, which we use in order to, to rank this content with the most effective way. So as you can see here, we have some um, very high figures. So if we switch back here to uh, our normal view, we can then have th this content all here so we can see the pieces which have the highest UVPM figure. Again, we're going to select a few pieces from here. And we can go up to the action bar at the top. So from here, we can start to um, build a clip report, which is a really nice way for us to um, build a very presentable uh, report, which we can share internally and um, to see the most important pieces of coverage here. We can export these. Uh, we can also share them so we can just straight away forward some key pieces uh, via email to our colleagues. And we can also edit them. So the campaign section, which we looked at previously, we can just go straight up and add those into that campaign. We can also add tags, modify the tone, and also modify the custom fields and analytics profiles. So this is just a really quick way for us to start and um, adding all of this content uh, together. What I'm going to do from here is go through and clear this filter, and we're going to have a look at some of our social content that we pull through. So if we go through on the left-hand side here, we have social networks. So we're pulling in some coverage here from Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So I'm just going to go out here and uh, select our Instagram content. So you can see we have uh, 362 pieces across Instagram here. As you go through these, we can, on the right-hand side, see um, the example of, of the image here, along with the text, which includes our keyword. But making sense of this, we really want to start ranking this based on, on factors that are most important to us. So if we head over to this grid view here, Yeah, the catch up. We can then start to rank this based on these factors. So we have our likes, shares, comments, and followers. So for this, I want to see uh, our Instagram post from the accounts which has the most followers. We go through here and start ranking these. We can see we've got uh, a few pieces here which have got 93,000, 155,000. So we, now we have a really clear overview of the content from these, these really um, in, influential accounts. And again, we go through here, we can see, see the post and here with the follower count. So that's just a very quick look at some of the things we can do here in the News My Coverage section. From here, I'm going to head over and take a look at the analytics. So once we've earned all that content and we've collected it through in the My Coverage, really from here what we can do is, is, is make more sense of this and make it more presentable fashion through graphs and charts. So these are the dashboards that we can build through the platform. So here's an example dashboard that I built uh, previously. And there are lots of different metrics that we can start to see here that you will have seen throughout the platform. So we can start to see uh, reach over time. You can also see here the uh, total mentions. Um, the great thing about these is that they're interactive. So here we can see there's a, a lift here in content. So we can click through here and we can start to see some of the examples of the content which we've achieved. I'll scroll down here and we can have a look at a couple more of these examples. So we can see share of coverage by media type. 
Also company mind share. So I mentioned previously about monitoring for, uh, against competition. We can start to see how much, uh, what's our share of voice compared to these and also mind share over time. So maybe if we've received a low amount of coverage at a particular time and one of our competitors have received a lot more, we can click through here and start to understand what was going on at that time and what was happening. Again, going through more, we can see sentiment and also by location. So there are lots and lots of different charts and graphs we can use here. But one of the really great features about this is the customization. So I'm gonna click here to edit. And these, these dashboards are fully customizable. So we can start to uh, change the names of all of these. We can move them around into an order that um, is most applicable to us. One of the other great things we can do is change the, the view. So here we have a donut chart, which we figured would be best for this, but we can click through here and if we want to, we can change it into a, a line graph. And through here, we have lots of other different options that we can uh, play with the uh, appearance and customization. We can change the colors and just make it most presentable for us based on what we need. So I'm gonna head back from out of that. And one of the really great things about this is the shareability. Once we've built all of these, these charts and graphs, we really wanna be able to share this with key stakeholders within our business. So what we can do is we can hit the download button here and we can start to build um, a PDF report, which is a very easy thing to do and we can share. But one of the really great things we can do is through the share button here, we can of course share through email, but we can also build um, web links. And these are password protected links, um, which make sure they're safe and secure. But we can share these with our colleagues and these are live links, which will update with the, with the graphs and charts with the new data as they go through. So people within our organization that we need to can constantly be kept up to date with the important information. So that was a very, very quick look at the analytics. Just before we finish up, I'll head into the insights and give a quick explanation of all of these um, features here. So um, as I mentioned before, if we have our own Facebook and Twitter accounts um, within uh, connected to the account, we can start to understand a little bit more about how we're performing across those platforms. So we can see um, particular posts, how many comments and likes have we had, also look at our followers. So this is a really great way for us to tie our own media channels with all of the earned media coverage that we're, we're gaining in the platform here. One of the other great things is the Outlook conversion. So I mentioned about Google and Adobe integrations. So if we have our Google Analytics account connected, we can start to see which websites are driving traffic to our company site. And from here, we can then start to understand uh, which pieces of our media that we're gaining on these sites are actually driving traffic and also revenue. So we can really start to tie those business results um, to the earned media that we're generating. And just to finish up here, I'm gonna head back into the My Campaigns part of the platform because this is really where all of these workflows which we've discussed all pull together in order to understand our campaign performance. And this is really the key benefit of Decision Comms Cloud because with these integrated workflows, we're able to identify the right influencers, we can then craft and distribute the meaningful campaigns, and then we can measure the impact through the media coverage we've generated. So thank you very much for, for listening to this demo. I think we're gonna pass this over and have a look at some of the questions that anyone has asked. Um, so I'll pass that back off to Jeff. Hey Luke, thanks for that very much. Just taking a look at the questions here. Uh, Luke, since you're sharing your screen, maybe one thing you can show is um, the ability to do a quick online search yourself. So you can check to see, you know, respond to stuff that's happening in real time. Because um, yes, the comms cloud can do that. Yeah, absolutely. So with keyword searching, um, we can of course, of course go in here and set up our own keyword searches. So um, these are very, very simple to do. I'll go through here and show you the workflow. In case you missed it, we head here to the cog at the top and head through to keyword searches. And from here, go through and set up a new search. And we can input all of the keywords here that we want to monitor for. We can select the type of sources we want. And then all of this coverage will then be pulled through uh, into the News My Coverage area of the platform. So this is just a really, really good feature because it allows us to react very, very quickly to new topics that are important to us. Um, one question we can't actually uh, demonstrate in the platform, but one I can talk to you would be uh, plans for integration of PR Newswire content into Comms Cloud. Uh, that is something we plan on rolling out this year in, in different phases. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's going to be rolling out now to provide sort of direct access to PR Newswire options to our client. Obviously, right now our clients have access to them um, in terms of using us to, to reach PR Newswire but it is gonna be actually be fully embedded within the Comms Cloud platform itself, and we're working on rolling that out. Uh, the plan is this year. Uh, questions? 
think that might be it for questions. Luke, do you see any questions? Uh, not too many others I can have. I think what we can do is if there are any other questions that come through, we can we can reach out directly to people um, as we finish. Um, we'll be happy to do that. Okay. Sounds good. Well, again, thank you everyone for joining uh, today's call. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we will follow up if, uh, if there are any other questions, please reach out uh, to us. You can send an email to us if uh, there's anything specific you want us to address. Uh, that would be uh, totally doable. So thank you again for your time. Uh, we will, uh, if you had any colleagues who want to check this out, we've recorded this, so we'll uh, we'll send you the link to the uh, recording.